Hi, I'm John Merritt. I'm from Warsaw, New York. I'm down here in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania for the Woodchuck Whittle, and this is what I do. Started with this piece right here. It's part of an old curtain shade. This is the um, a dowel out of a curtain shade um, that broke, and um, <laughs> it's got blood stains. Uh, I was not very good at pen, and uh, I cut my fingers a lot. And once in a while, I still do. <laughs> and then my dad got me into pliers, and scissors, but the pliers are like this. This is to show how it's done. They are carved in the closed position, and when they're done, they open up. No, they're not usable. Um, and then I got into the scissors. Same basic joint with three extra cuts. Um, the ladies like this one because of, of the sewing. And then, of course, I get into the uh, tongs, and everything's carved from a single piece of wood, no glue. And then, of course, I change the woods. This is butternut. I hope that shows up. Um, and then I get tired of doing the same size, so I go smaller. And um, on some of the stuff, like the scissors, I get really small. And every one works. And I don't like doing the same thing over and over again. So I get into, if you can see this, Ohio blue tip match. And I put 15 and a half lengths of chain on the back. This is number 10. I broke nine. They don't use the best wood for matches. And then I did a chain out of a toothpick, a square birch, square birch toothpick. The same thing, there's about 15 links of chain on there. Now this is a ball and cage. It's actually carved with the ball in there. And people think you, you know, stretch the case and put it in there, but you don't. And this is how it's done. You start out with a piece of wood you cut out on each side of the ball, you start to round it, and you start to round it, and until finally you get it free, and then she runs like this, back and forth. To make this thing, I had wanted to do something with a square cage inside of a square cage, because I'd seen one before and I'd never done it, it was something new. Well, when I laid it out on a piece of paper, there was a lot of room. So what I did is I drew a circle, I said, hmm, there's still a lot of room, so I drew another circle. Well, when I got into it, I laid it out, and cut out the first square cage. And then I went in and I laid out two cylinder cages and left them attached. Then I did the four balls, which I don't know if you can see, and I got the balls free. Then I separated this and then everything worked fine. And then, that was fun. Then I had to go to the other side and that was work. When I'm carving a pair of pliers, I carve the joint here and it's one third of the distance. And why I cut off the back of the blade is so that it doesn't cut into the good wood, but it only cuts the, the part you want to remove. And you do both this front and back. When I'm making this cut here, it has to be parallel to the outside and parallel to the other cut. And that makes the joint smoother when you open and close it. And then these cuts are one third the distance also when they go down to that parallel cut and up to the parallel cut here and here, and then the, your last cut is the, actually the face of the pliers. And if you're lucky, it'll open like this the first time. But usually you're not lucky and you have to go back in and find that little piece of grain. And it's only one little fiber sometimes uh, to make it work. Now this is the normal size shoe I, I use. Um, it's about an inch and a half thick. About an inch and a, uh, excuse me, inch and a quarter by an inch and a half by an inch and mm, three eighths. And then I go into some of the bigger ones when you get the nice, nice wood like this. And then I got tired of doing the same ones, so I went into the baby one. And then just for a change of pace, I went into the monster shoe. <laughs> and the, the big ones and the small ones are a lot harder to do than your standard size. Just the logistics of holding them and carving them without cutting your fingers. I started out with a 12 foot 2 before and I got to 8 foot and then I broke it. There's 298 links here and about half hour a link. This is how I start with a square piece of wood by whatever length you want. I'll take and mark it out first. Uh, if the piece is half inch wide I make a, it, the links one inch long and of course they overlap. Then I cut out the sides then I separate. See how this is marked out? I separate these and I get the links free and they actually gain this much each time you do a link so the wood actually gets longer and this is what I use as a teaching guide.
you get tired of doing the same thing over and over again. So now I get into a, an actual cowboy boot with dust on it. <laughs> oh, and then I made this one for my wife. Um, it's a basswood apple with black walnut and um, black walnut worm with uh, copper glasses, which I also made. Uh, Time-wise, I do not know how much I made, but it's a favorite of mine. This was a piece of scrap I got from somebody. It's two inch square by six inches long. It's a piece of Honduras mahogany. I laid it out with the cage, and then I put 24 balls all carved in through the cage, and that took about 200 hours. I started with this one when I was 10, as I told you, and I'm 64 now, so I've been doing this for 54 years, on and off, try to do as much as I can, but uh, work gets annoying. <laughs> I'm trying to spend more time with my carvings just to relax. I do not sell anything because of the time involved, like a shoe. Here it takes approximately five hours. It starts out as a blank, like this. And um, I just do it for the fun of it and to show people.